What the fuck is happening, people? Welcome to the General Bander Podcast. First of all, we give a quick shout out to our loyal sponsors, Manscaped.com. They're the world's leading company when it comes to making devices that shave your nut bag. Bear with. There it is. I've got one right here. If I get uh, 20,000 views on this thing on YouTube, I'll shave my nuts live on camera. Um, that's it there. The the lawnmower five is it the five point or the four point though? I don't know. But that is uh that's 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 top shelf when it comes to uh products there. And they sponsor this podcast. What I would do, uh, as it's coming up to the festive period, my guys, is I would get their care package where they throw everything into this beautiful leather travel bag. It's got everything in there. It's got the lawnmower. It's got the weed whacker, which is like the little nostril in the ear job. It's got ball toner. It's got ball deodorant. It's got crop reserver, ball reviver. I mean, your nuts will be going, am I loose? Am I tight? Am I, am I, wh- wh- what's going on here? Your nuts won't know what's hit them. Um, and because it's called Manscaped, I dare say it would also, uh, you know, that doesn't gender it, you know, it says Manscaped, but it could also, uh, I don't see why that wouldn't work on a set of flaps, to be honest with you. So bad for anybody, and uh, if you listen to this podcast and you go to manscaped.com, use the code jambat one you get 20% off that purchase, and they're not giving them away, you know what I mean, this is a premium product. So if you can uh, get yourself onto the website and use that code jambat one you get 20% off, it would just make a fantastic stocking filler. Not even a stocking filler, you can have that someone as their main present, be like, here, do yourself a favour, get them nuts revived. But anyway, yep, shout out to manscaped.com, thanks for your support. Yeah. That cunt crashed a fucking plane and lived. Farage, he was driving it. Was he? Well, that's what I'm asking you. I don't, I don't oh, know. He was in a plane. I, I don't crash, know, but he saying. was in like a small private plane. Was he? And it fucking hit the dirt and uh, he got out all blood up. He was upside down for a minute, so the blood ran up his head. Wow. And he was like, Dude, you're just like, man, they get, they get Kobe. Yeah, What's, I was just about to say. Poor old Kobe. There was a joke made about Kobe last night. Poor taste. Poor by, taste. By you? No, jeez, I wouldn't. I wouldn't joke about that. Um, no, I think Sean Hegarty. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. No, it was. Uh, it was good. He said something about r- running it into the ground. That was the thing. But uh, the Kobe thing. That's a funny thing, man. Because I was like a big basketball fan, mm-hmm. and uh, I remember when uh, Ari Shafir came out and did the uh, that thing. Remember? Yeah, with, with Kobe and he was like, "Oh, another rapist is dead and stuff." I haven't listened to his podcast since. I really, uh, Aris? yeah, yeah. And I was listening to it before, and I know we're comics and everyone should be able to do everything, but I just, I was like, yeah, that, Un- unnecessary. Oh, that hurt me. Like, yeah. I was like, that is the most rotten thing I've ever. The kids, yeah, for fuck's sake. I know people think he fucking he was in this this helicopter by himself. Yeah, his you daughter know, his and her daughter teammates. And her the yeah, yeah, they all fucking died, and yeah, families destroyed. Yeah, and he. But yeah, welcome to the General Bonder Podcast, by the way, guys. My guest today, on. Mike Rice. Uh, we'll keep that in the Kobe jokes. Uh, cheers for joining me. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking the shoddy setup. Aye. Uh, I've I've seen a lot of killings at Lavery's. Yeah, but that was that was some shift last night. Oh, put in there. Oh, thanks. Did you enjoy that. yourself. I did, I did as it happened, and it's funny because I was, uh, I was nervous beforehand, and um, because I'd be nervous, I'd be nervous playing up here uh, for a few reasons. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the reasons is like, uh, and now this sounds real fucking like I'm a bootlicker, but like the Northern Irish people are so funny. Yeah. Um, like I think Irish people in general are, you know, are very funny people, but Northern Irish then are like a little bit funnier again and i don't know okay. if that's coming from you know whatever people would be like what's the trouble you know they had to make his, yeah. themselves laugh or whatever i don't know what it is but so there was that and then it's the fact that uh it's your club you know i had to follow you which i was like ah, for is Jesus that a big deal christ yeah fuck's sake for me it is <laughs> i mean it doesn't mean nothing to you but um uh so so I was nervous, but you actually put me very at ease before because when we were waiting around to go on, you says to me, and I don't know if you were doing it to be sound or it's how you felt, but you were like, oh, this place always makes me the most nervous. Yeah. You said. No, it does, though. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely does. And then I was like, oh, I'm nervous as well. And then you just said, you were just said, just lace into them. 
mm-hmm. and that's exactly gave me the license to do what I would want to do. Well, you know, I've, I have seen it like numerous times where, you know, I, I remember being in Edinburgh and there was a gig on a bus. This years ago, like it's two thousand fucking fourteen or something. Yeah, uh, there was a double decker bus outside the Three Sisters, and a guy that I knew ran this gig, and I would I was living the closest to the to the venue. Mm-hmm. So if someone dropped out, which they always do on a comp show, he just rang me. It started. Yeah. So it was like half two in the daytime, and he's like, "Oh man, can you come down again?" I'd fucking bomb down in a pair of shorts and like, and I got really good at this short like middle of the day set. Yeah, and. Paddy McDonald and a few ones were over and I seen and you know what Paddy's like but he he went up on this bus and he seen that there was kids and whatever and he fucking tried to you know censor himself a wee bit and yeah. stuff like that and it and he would be killing otherwise and then he sort of censored himself and it didn't go so well and you're like that was I seen that like once and it was like you just never never try and yeah you know tailor it or pander or any of that shit like the best thing you can do is just like fucking go at it yeah and the, the, the crowd in laveries really kind of give you as much rope as you want to be a complete uh an utter ape like you know oh yeah you know like as in the the more kind of uh deranged you become the more they're kind of encouraging it and oh, yeah. clap they kind of want to see it they want to see they just want to see wild shit it seems now now that's this is after one uh one viewing of it but they seem like uh comedy fans well they definitely are yeah they're, they're definitely like comedy savvy you know yeah if you know there's a lot of places probably in ireland in general where you you would go up and say something and they're like what a terrible bastard he is oh yeah and you're like a fucking of course i don't mean it yeah and i think that's they get that in laveries mm. you know there have been there's a lot of regulars and they, they keep coming back and they yeah. know that people are just gonna say horrendous shit mm. for laughs yes which is how it should be that's absolutely how it should be but you curated that like you know so well, pro- yeah probably but like over like fucking I, like me and Maureen always say you nearly have we nearly had to like teach people how to enjoy a comedy night which sounds so insult you know like demeaning but it's yeah. like people would think it was this big fucking piss up night out and they'd start drinking at fucking Three o'clock in the afternoon, they turn up pissed and like get kicked out. And, all, and you're like, this isn't what this is. This is like going to the cinema, yeah, almost or the theater or something. But you can have a few drinks and just just enjoy yourself. Like, don't fucking. Yeah, they were very well behaved. I thought they were very well behaved. The only like the only heck that I was getting was from a lad to my right who just was so into everything I said. He just said fair play. Mm-hmm. Just said fair play. It was like the most uh, positive heckling but of all time. That's great. But you can tell the difference. You can tell the difference between like someone who's just overexcited and somebody who's like actually just fucking. He was just delighted with Anthony. I was like, oh, my best friend grabbed my my cock. Fair play. <laughs> <That's> her, <laughs> licking period blood off, uh, you know, taste like kinds. Fair fucking play. He was just could. I said and I said it last night, but you literally could have said Anthony. Oh, I yeah. was just like, oh yeah, I, I molested. I molested my aunt. He just fair fair fucks. I don't know, absolutely, you get glad yourself. I'm glad someone's riding around me. Jesus, just before we came in there, I was fucking. Uh, I don't know. Do you get this much in uh, Belfast? There was a, a fella on the street, a Jesus lad, mm. but he's a Belfast lad who was just shouting out. He has a microphone. He's just like, he's like, I know there's a lot of ladies out here today who are looking for a man. Well, I can tell you, I found you on Jesus Christ. <laughs> And he was looking like shouting at the ladies on the street. And Jesus Christ, he'll take but care I, of you. But I, yeah, like I, I was literally doing material about that last night. But th- those guys, you know, sometimes it's like bo- borderline like, why has someone not like reported you yet? Yeah. Because they're like so out of control. In oh, he's out of his mind. Are you looking the ride? I know the very man. <laughs> his name is Jesus Christ. Christ will find your G spot and he will badger it relentlessly. <laughs> relentlessly. Relentlessly. Just go in- instant paisley. Yeah. <laughs> Relentless on that vagina. Uh, he was a charismatic man, paisley. I'll give him that. But uh, yeah. fucking, uh, uh, yeah, those, those guys in Belfast. I remember, it's not that funny, but I never died at the time. Just, there was a guy on crutches with a fucking, you know, the broken leg, like where they plaster your leg up to like your hip. Yeah, yeah. And he's, he, it looked very fresh, and he was hobbling along, and this guy's like, the Lord's headed for the day, shouting away, and he, he 
this guy wasn't moving quick enough yeah past him so he spent like you know a good fucking 20 30 seconds trying to get past this guy and he just lost his mind he just turned around this guy was like will you shut the fuck up you fucking what do you say bible bashing cunt or something drop the drop the crutch and had the pick it back up just and then so slow so slow to get away yeah but he just he'd had enough like he'd absolutely had enough that that area that corn market like area of belfast is yeah. just freak show see when the sun comes out you could just fucking get a carry out and just sit there drinking cans with everyone else drinking cans and uh just watch the freak show yeah just all sorts of shit going down the jesus guys there's a guy called jelvis have you heard of him i haven't heard of jelvis no jelvis is a he's been to lavery shout out uh young lad just doing elvis songs in the street and is it well received are people like jelvis fans oh yeah they love it yeah they love it and then you know with the film coming out kind of oh that gave the, him a big lift bit, did of, it? bit of wind under his wings ah. oh, yeah. you know fucking <laughs> Going absolutely nuts in the street. Ain't nothing but it. <laughs> and he goes for a full white fucking jumpsuit and everything. Yeah. And the hair slick back and all. Fair play. Full commitment. Well, fair play to him. What, what, do you know what age young? Like, like is he... I'd be amazed if he was over 25, like. Jesus Christ. Because a very yeah. throwback thing to do, isn't it? To mm. be like, you know, an Elvis impersonator, like. Yeah. Like, whatever about our parents being... We were discussing the current way. I was saying, like, my parents aren't overjoyed with me doing comedy but like if you told him you're going to be an elvis impersonator surely they'd be like you know is that surely that would be worse oh yeah than the comedy thing yeah yeah absolutely i think my mother would understand it more she's like <laughs> do you know what i mean <laughs> yeah. at least it's music it's yeah. cla classics what what level would you have to hit for your parents to be like fair play i'll be honest with you I think they would like for it to stay to stay low key. Oh really? You know, I think so. Maybe a bit. Yeah. I don't think my mother would want the audience being expanded for it. People because, coming up to her like, "Oh, seen young Michael on the." Yeah, she wouldn't TV because either. because she thinks it's like you know. I think she thinks it's like kind of a, a little bit um, immoral or something like that. I have kind of I am dancing with the devil a bit okay. or something, you know. But like I have had like family members. You know, like uh, at family occasions, because like my mother's family, they're very proper people. You know, they're very like you know they love like table manners and stuff. Mm. Like my mother was obsessed with table manners growing up. You know, um, just my left. Gra my granny was a bit like that. Yeah, but then this she's smart though because she, she introduced money. Yeah, she was like, if you fucking learn how to you know hold that knife and fork properly, I'll yeah, give you, I'll give you this twenty quid. And I was like. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> You know, so she she bribed <laughs> yeah, me into being like soup fucking properly. Yeah, like my mother had all these things. Like you 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 had to like if you're eating soup, you had to you had to bring the spoon away from you. You couldn't bring the spoon towards you because then you're gonna spill. So you tilt the bowl this way. There's all these little rules, and my mind I was so violently disinterested in it. Yeah, I know. Even as you're doing it, it's just completely. It's just wrong. It's warped. But uh, my mind was so violently disinterested in this stuff. Yeah. You know, that I just couldn't retain this information, you know? Like, it's interesting, because, like, every single day, I'd have to set the table, and she's like, you put your uh, side plate on the left side of the table, Matt, when you're press, uh, setting the table, and every day I'd forget which side it was, because my brain was just like, I will not yeah. keep that information in my head, you know? It's so, like, you know, like, uh, you know, I have a son, and if I'm raising him correctly, and he's eating like a dickhead, I'll be like, right, bro, you gotta fucking, come on. Yeah. You look fucking like a gimp eating like that that's right but it wouldn't be like it seems like such a small part of uh, your day to be m like hyper focused on that's right yeah i think if my mother did mushrooms that like or something like that she'd be like where cutlery isn't the be all and end all you yeah. know i think that yeah. would be a realization yeah it'd be like i've wasted my life on cutlery <laughs> you know and then it'd be you know, quite sad she'd be like what even is soup <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, like, what even, what are we doing with it's soup? It's just vegetables mashed up and liquidized. There's nothing God special about God gives us soup. these vegetables and we boil the goodness out of them <laughs> yeah. and turn it into juice, basically. Yeah, she, yeah I, I think she might harm herself. I, I'm not going to let her do it. But uh, I think there's a point where it's like, it's, it's, it's too late to open someone's mind, you know? Yeah. Like, close it up now. Because if they were to find out now that it's all been a cod then it's, it's only going to make them sad. Yeah. You know, because they've spent their whole life, like my father now, 
is narrow, narrow minded. Yeah. But like effective. Do you know, like I read this thing before that narrow minded people are a lot more effective than open minded people. For sure. Because open minded people are like, well, it could be anything. We could do this or yeah. that or maybe the options are narrow minded people are like, this is what it fucking is. And this is what we're going to do. So if an emergency happens. Ignorance is bliss, you know, it doesn't. Oh, it doesn't, it, doesn't mean, it doesn't mean you have to be thick, but you're just like, you're just everything else is like at the wayside. And you're like, this is what I do. Absolutely. Like my father now, he, he would say that life, uh, the only thing important in life is land. Okay. So our <laughs> land and the farm. Yeah. Like that's it. Genuinely. Right. It's like land. Then like pff, he would say God, but then like <laughs> sausages and then family. Like he couldn't. Genuine love sausage. Eat dick. I this tell podcast you. gonna be called Land Comma. <laughs> what was it? Land, land God, God sausages. sausages. Yeah, <laughs> I swear to God, lad. This lad <laughs> loves sausages so much. I came in there one day. This is not so long ago now, and I think I was back. I was back. I was living in Dublin at the time, and I came in, and the cunt was eating raw sausages. Right? Yeah. Like raw, and he had them in a sandwich, and I came over. So I said, Dad, would you don't be eating? It's just my mother wasn't there. And he's just so lazy. He just wants the sausage in him. He doesn't want the wait time. Yeah. He's there. And I and I get Dad, would you trying to stop? And he starts running off with the little sausages in his hand, like the Pied Piper. Um but the, the, the man the, there's there's like a rawness to him. You yeah. know what I mean? Like that's just and he has beliefs that would just blow your mind. Like he believes, right? So I have like three brothers, so there's four of us, right? Uh-huh. Four sons, and which my father now was fucking delighted about. He'd have a very Chinese attitude to daughters, you know what oh, I mean? Yeah. Down the toilet, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, in like, the river. See you later. Yeah, like we had it. We had a, a neighbour, Ned uh, Kelly, now, and uh, yeah, he's Australian yeah. Cr- criminal. Ned <laughs> Kelly, Ned fucking Kelly, mate. Uh, so we had a uh, neighbour, Ned, and he had four daughters, and my father would often like refer to like he'd just be like, "Poor old Ned, complete yeah. and utter." Disaster Yeah Waste of fucking time well, Oh no Complete waste of time And he thought it was like A real tragedy But so he, <laughs> he Sends him flowers And he would send him flowers oh, Every week and so daughters, sorry, for, my man, so sorry. sorry for your troubles There there, Ned You should have You should have drowned <laughs> P.S. You should have drowned him um, <laughs> You should have drowned him Killed the wife Get a new one Get a son Henry VIII style um, So uh, But so my father believes In a thing called uh, Breeding Right mm-hmm. So like he believes that if you're from a farm, you need to marry someone else from a farm <laughs> okay. so that your children come out as farmers. Is your dad Hitler? Huh? <laughs> My father would have leanings towards the Nazi party. In the yes. old eugenics type vibes? He would have thought Hitler got a raw deal yeah. <laughs> by the media. <laughs> He's probably going to go a hard run. Yeah. Because he kind of had, Mein Kampf has a few fucking fun chapters, he thought. Um, he kind of, it is a little bit like that, but so he thinks... Uh, yeah, so if you kind of, if you marry someone from the town who's uh-huh. not from a farm, should a child will come out with an ear growing out of their forehead or, you know, kind of just wrong. Yeah. And then they won't keep the farm in the family and then it's all, it's all uh, to snot. But so he then didn't think that he'd have to, he'd have to really raise us because he thought once he marries and impregnates someone else from land that we're yeah. just going to come out welding. You know, yeah, like yeah, just literally yeah. drive out of her on a tractor, like. Yeah. Do you know? Seriously. These feral kids. They'll so, raise themselves. Absolutely. Well, he couldn't believe that we didn't know stuff. He oh, could. Yeah. I, I'm talk. I'm not joking. He could not believe when we were like five or six. He tells us to go get a tool in the tool shed. That he's never explained what it yeah. was. And we'd be like, I, I don't know. I don't know what. The- go get it, will you? <laughs> Go get the... <laughs> and you just full of anxiety. If I was just go over to the tool shed, and you know you're looking for nothing because you don't even know what it is. Yeah. So then you kind of <laughs> absolutely. Where, where have you put it now? Where, you have, you, that where have you put that yoke now? <laughs> you fucker. Yeah, I thought the yoke was here. Absolutely, a lot. Of, there was a lot of that posturing. So, uh, so anyway, then he, you know. Uh, the father was like just forever like just like yeah you're useless ever fuck you know but <clears throat> it was also to prop up his own idea that he was really fucking needed yeah do you know what I mean yeah like he'd be like you're useless sure uh, if it wasn't for me the place would be uh, down to Swanee and you were like yeah well we're six like <laughs> do you know what I mean we're six yeah bastard 
And now that's all I'm like, just in my head, I'm used to, you know, like just has me, like at my head. I mean, Bill Burr had a bit like when you're young, like that your head just gets filled like a fucking jelly donut with ideas. Oh yeah. And, like that's just in my head, like just fucking, <sighs> that fucking hell. You know, now he is a good man all the same. Oh yeah. You know, and like in, in a lot of ways, but. But it, I mean, it's just very much a, an Irish sort of, sometimes you see things and you're like, how is Ireland real? Yeah, you know when you hear some stories and some the man's eating raw sausages for fuck's sake. Yeah, he's and that's not the first time I've seen that. No, you know I've seen that. Tom the Bear sent me a clip of some fella like a you know like a fair fair thing where they had a competition like who's got the best sheep or whatever, and this boy's just walking along, and they're in his pocket too, and he's just like, arr, arr, eating this big fucking pink sausage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mental. Yeah, yeah. The rules don't apply for men like that. No, they don't, and I think like something like salmonella, they'd be too stubborn to get. It. But he'd say something like, ah, "There's no fucking meat in it," and just eat it anyway. Yeah. 100%. Like, if you had a good quality high meat content sausage, yeah. that's probably dangerous. But 100%. If you, if you eat that out of fucking pink shit, yeah. I'm sure he gives a fuck. That's certainly how he would see it, yeah. And he'd be like fucking sucking it up like a fruit. Do you remember them? Oh, yeah. Oh, Jesus, so he wouldn't nice. eat the skin, though? Huh? He wouldn't eat the skin. Oh, he he'd, just... eat, he'd eat that at the end. And he just fucking. Jesus. Do you know, chawing it. Do you know? Jesus Christ. Ah, yeah. But like, so he, what he would do, because he, he he didn't like to cook, he, he wouldn't like to cook yolks, you know? Mm. So like, um, if my mother wasn't around, he'd just make such a, like, he, he'd kind of be sulking if he'd have to cook his own stuff. Yeah. So what he'd do, he just, I mean, it was, he's just, see the man, he, he his life is like a theatrical performance, you know? <laughs> like, like it really is. Like, it's just all this theater of uh, misery. Life is miserable and then you die and, you know, and then still at the same time, all he likes in life, he like, he just likes ice cream. <laughs> like, honestly, like ice cream. I thought you were going to say like football or something. No. Oh, no, there's no interest in He's that. just wading through that day. Absolutely. They're just fucking. Uh, uh, honest to God, he loves 99s. He loves cans of Coke. He likes chips. Um, and that's it. He's not, he's not into drinking. He's not into sport. He's not into Anton. He says he said recently his only ambition left in life is to die in the farmyard to like just drop dead in the shit. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, he's writing a he's writing a book. Um <laughs> a self-help book. Uh but um What was what was where where are you on the age range of brothers? I'm second. Second. But, yeah, but my my brother Patrick, so he's my older brother. We were like Irish twins. So like mm. We were like a year apart, uh, so we were like the joint oldest. So there was a lot of expectation put on us. So we were uh, kind of like just joint. One e is taking the farm. Yeah, like that's it. Yeah, right. And we don't want to. We don't want to hear. That's why you're here. Uh, we were told. Now, luckily, my younger brother uh, James ended up taking the farm. Um, not really because he loved farming, but more because he's he loved power. Ah, uh. kind of a power hungry, kind of an authoritarian. Okay. Uh, fella and child even as a child he he was very um he had a lust for power really oh he used to love keys this is like game of thrones on a fucking in a face <laughs> isn't it he was a bit like kind of like, like, like in the he, evil young one he was a little there was kind of a bit of little fingers about yeah you know what i mean a bit of uh, kind of a mixture between little finger and uh varus you know your man the you all i can all i can picture is like <laughs> and your dad spinning around like on an ice cream <laughs> <laughs> the symbolic strawberry sauce over yeah. the top of it my father gets beheaded at the end of the first season <laughs> <laughs> mouthful of ice cream uh, Bastard Yeah <laughs> you know, Sean Bean just Could not stop yeah. saying that Bastard <laughs> Fucking bastard yeah, Bastard Have you seen that compilation? No There's a compilation of Sean Bean saying Bastard Really? And it's fucking Seven minutes long Do you know what's fucking great About this little And I don't know if this is a This kind of a serendipitous thing here now But Sean Bean is also in A, a film called The Field Did you mm -hmm. ever see that? Uh, a John B. Keane film Which is my father's favourite Film it, of course it is the He hasn't even seen it huh? He hasn't seen it but Nah he just likes the title yeah. <laughs> Got the cover and a frame yeah. on the wall Love it I fucking love that one It's the best <laughs> uh, But uh, in, 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 in that uh, the, In the film The Field right uh, There's a guy called The Bull McCabe Right And uh -huh. he has this field And he's worked like a bollocks On this field He's filled it Like he's got seaweed And all this shite To like fertilise the field And now the grass is green And he loves this field 
and he has a, a son who's Sean uh, Bean now and Sean Bean's whole thing is he's going to take over the farm um, but anyway this yank comes into town and uh, and he wants to buy the field and he has the money to buy the field he has a lot of money and uh, so the Bull McCabe murders the yank kills him stone dead gone see you later and uh, and my father thinks this was absolute proper order right and piercing up and down the living room that's right yeah absolutely killed a fucking bastard he did say I did ask him seriously one time I was like if someone tried to take some of your land would you kill them and he said I would oh yeah and we do have a gun um, so uh, but Sean Bean's character Tyg he gets off with the with the tinker's daughter he gets off with a traveller and now this would be high treason now if you knew much about the agricultural community uh, um, and my father uh, holds a deep grudge against the character type but also the actor Sean Bean because he can't really tell oh yes yeah, so, yeah okay tell that apart really so yeah. he just still thinks like that Sean Bean yeah. <laughs> did that like if you seen him in real life he'd be like yeah, oh I think he I think rat. I think he'd have a few strong words from you oh. uh, but uh, anyway the, the whole point of the movie is that like the, your man's love of land leads to like the destruction of his family he loses his son he doesn't talk to his wife it, the whole herd of uh, cattle run off a cliff it's whole thing but all this now the allegory of that the message would go over my father's head completely he just thinks the bull was great for murdering your man but uh, <laughs> he just seems a legend for doing that like uh, but anyway my little brother uh, James um, so like I was saying uh, so he's a great lad now he's running the farm he's smartest of all of us great piano player beautiful uh, beautiful player um, but so he was like uh, even as a young man now he was like yeah he had his eyes on he kind of had his eyes on the prize he didn't love the work in the farm but he loved the control he used to be obsessed with keys mm. like he'd have a key for everything okay like he'd have a key for the front door the back door the shed he had a key for all our rooms we didn't have a key for them and then he would like use the keys like as a the, kind of a prison guard yeah well, like he would have seen, like as a prison guard or like janitor at our school, like lads who have the yeah. circles and all the keys. He would have thought they like that's that's his David Beckham. Yeah, like do you know what I mean? Yeah, like that's his. <laughs> that's who he thinks is. One day I'll have a one day I'll, I'll have fifty <laughs> keys on, on a hip. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Well, he saw them as a, a, a kind of a, a route to power. So, but he would use them then, like as uh, he used them then to kind of discipline us. You know. Um. So, like I the, remember, we, the wee brother, like yeah. Yeah, just gang up on him. Oh no, we would, but see, he was he, he very difficult to handle because he had a, a real deep sense of like justice and human rights and stuff, and he would just go further than you would go. So if you put your hands on him, he would be like, he would, say, I'm gonna fucking kill you, you know, like there's nothing could keep him down. He, he was kind like with my parents, he you know he'd be kind of threatening to call Childline and you know oh, okay. like one of the and the guards and he says you don't have the right to put your hand on me yeah. you know this kind of thing um uh so i remember one day i got up and went <laughs> to go out my bedroom door right yeah doors locked i'm like what the fuck's going on i said hey what, what's going on the door's locked he was on the other side of the door he's like you shouldn't have eaten all the potatoes mike they were supposed to be divided up equally you know so he would use it as like kind of you know his own form of like Communism? justice yeah <laughs> Yeah, he was kind of like Paul Potter, like yeah, <laughs> yeah. He was the Irish Paul Pot. But then one day, right, he uh, uh, one day my mother took his phone, right. Now, oh god, he would have seen this as a massive infringement, yeah, on his rights, because that's his phone. She yeah. has no right to do that. So he's like, yeah, you don't have that fucking right to do that. I got fucking right. So anyway, next morning, my father gets up, whatever, it's half six in the morning. Going out to milk the cows. Goes out to go out the back door. Back door's locked. <laughs> right. <laughs> Comes back into the kitchen. My brother's waiting in the kitchen, right? In the dark. And he's like, I Just want my fucking him. I want my phone back. Yeah. And my father's like, What? He doesn't even understand what's going on yet. Turns out, right, James had locked all the doors of the house. He had taken the keys of the vehicles. <laughs> <laughs> and listen to this in a sick twist had locked the toilets right oh so now my parents my mother's coming down she's a nurse she's to go to work and they're going ape shit am. like I'm talking like they are screaming they're like give us the keys you will never remember but he's just screaming back I want my fucking phone 
like he's like like fucking Bobby Sands level of like just there's nothing they can do. He's not gonna break. He's not gonna break. Like they could be waterboarding him. Um. So <laughs> eventually, like literally, he's like, I, I like I. They should remake a film called The Kitchen. <laughs> And it's just this fucking war of attrition. Like, who's gonna, who can stand in the rain the longest? Day? You <laughs> like, bastards. Honestly, like, he. Uh, I mean, eventually they just had to give it to him. They just it's smart. Him. I mean, what can you do? I mean, but like, as soon as obviously, as soon as they got the keys back, you know, they just fucking, you know. Thank you. There's your phone. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Just, just jumped him. All fucking. Yeah, yeah. All sexy. All they, they made miss me of him. Like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and we were all, we all, we all got in on it. Like, fuck, yeah. fires are so fucking yeah. full what metal jacket. What if the style. fucking house was on fire, you <laughs> dick? You <laughs> fucking bastard. Guys, just want to jump in for a second and give a shout out to our sponsor, the Calm app. It is the best app around for just general well being. You know, stay mindful, stay serene with uh, plenty of breathing exercises. They've got um, different soundscapes. They've got numerous ways that you can relax and you know what you need your body to be in that sort of relax and repair mode as much as possible you know your sleep might be bad you might have a hectic day but you want to take time out to yourself and just chill out and put on maybe like an adult sleep story where you've got a celebrity going a, ce a celebrity celebrity you know just whispering in your ear as you as you slowly drift off to sleep that's what you need in your life you need to stop what you're doing take a breath be mindful you know what I mean? Hold it in for six. <sighs> out for six. And just be chilled at all times. It's the best app for it. And if you go to calm.com and use the code BANTER, you get 40% off a yearly subscription. Not to be sniffed at. And there'll be plenty of sniffing when you're using that app, you know? Long sniffs in, long sniffs out. The Calm app. Calm.com. Use the code BANTER. Get on it, my guys. Yeah, but uh, so how much farming? You, like when you're at home, when you're younger, are you just farming? All that. Yeah, like if you went home yeah. now and you were like, oh, "I was calling in for Christmas or whatever," they're like, "Get the fuck, get out there." You get about. It's funny. There's like a you get about a, a two or three day kind of grace period. It's longer now actually because James is home and time has moved on. But for the longest time, you'd get about two or three days, and then like say like the, the clock strikes twelve. On the third day, and my father just <laughs> wakes up the next day, and he's like, "Why the fuck are them lads not?" You know, and he would have all these like sayings to describe our kind of laziness. He's like, oh, "You wouldn't work to warm yourself, you. <laughs> you know, if there was work in the bed, you'd sleep on the floor, you lazy fucking." You know, <laughs> so he'd have just all this shit ready to go for you. So you would just out of like guilt, like because guilt is the 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 kind of the petrol he'd use to get your engine going like so uh you would is the answer but like growing up it was like you'd be milking cows every evening and like like you're just covered in shit yeah. all the time like yeah. cow shit yeah like just like caked in the shit like cows are shitting in your mouth like count like often it's a it's a thing that like you know I'm not a countryman, but I've I've lived in the country now for ah. for quite some time. Do you like it? I do like it now. I like the. I, I was dragged out there kicking and screaming. Yeah. And then once you get used to the the space and the peace and quiet, and then you have to go into town for a day. And you're like fuck this shit. Um. Mm. But it, my first observation was just like, like I'm standing behind a guy in the shop, and I'm like, he is. He's dripping shite onto the floor. Yeah. You know, the guy's wearing a big fucking Mac that, you know, like a waterproof jacket. It's yeah. like it's like falling off him onto the ground and he stinks of shit. <laughs> and he's buying like two scotch eggs. And I'm like, you know. And then it, and then I get weird looks because they're probably dressed a bit and they're like wear got a nice pair of trainers on. They're like, where's this guy going? Fucking pr uh, would pride think, or something? Where are you he, going? he would think you're a coward, like. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> Just as soft as butter, like. Yeah. You know. <laughs> He'd really think you're not worth shooting, like, yeah. like that's like just a waste of space. But like these lads, like, lad, they're like, like there's not enough water in the world to wash my father's hands. Like they're like these deep calluses. They're just shit yeah. caked into them. Um, but I always, to be honest, I always kind of wanted to have hands like that because yeah. it's like man, yeah, man hands. And by the time I was eighteen, I did have kind of like good rinks in my hand. But I, I haven't done a, a good day's work in about. You know, in so many years, like yeah. that, I'm just gone. I'm just like one of the rest, you know. I know it is a it is a very uh, country thing to be like. It's just how many fucking hours have you racked up 
doing yeah. a thing. Like That's the, right. the farm behind us, the guy's fucking just pushing. They bring in the grass and fucking. I'm like, I'd love to go over and be like, what the fuck are you doing here? Because you've put it over here and yeah. then you've moved it over here <laughs> and then you fucking put it over there. And the beep on the reverse, can you not turn that off? Because it is actually four in the morning. The guy's That's like, right. big fucking diesel thing just doot, 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 up. And I'm like, bro. And by the way, I think if you didn't squirt shite all over this field, <laughs> I bet I bet you it would grow. I bet you it would grow again. Yeah. But now the whole fucking house smells of shite. Yeah. I mean, the smell is like, you you only really grasp it. I do when I when I come home, like. Yeah. But like, till I was 18, I was going most places just whacking as shit, like. I was whacking the shit. Like I remember, I'd go in and I used to play like uh, sport, like hurling in a town club, you know. Uh-huh. And I go in there, like, and the the lads would just be on, like, they'd be like, "Racy, you fucking, you stink, like, you yeah. smelly farmer," you know. And I just, <laughs> just just have to be like, "You've hit the nail on the head." I don't know what to tell you. And even and that's even that's like washed and changed and all that shit, and you still stink. Oh, there's just no washing it off. Like, just it's shite. Imagine now if you think of like, because it's a cow. Like, imagine when you're friends, imagine like Bartlett or someone was just shiting on you all week. You're going to have a... B- <laughs> you know. <laughs> that is my fucking worst nightmare. Yeah, that. Bartlett squatting from a height. The only man could shit on you all week to, <laughs> without fucking stopping, just blasting it out. But like, it's <sighs> like that. There's just, there's not enough water in the world to get you, to get you clean. Um, But... Ah yeah, it is, I never wanted like it. It's funny because I never want. I never wanted it. I never ever. I was like, why on earth would anyone sign up to mm-hmm. this? And my father couldn't have been selling it any uh, any worse as well, you know? Yeah. Because he'd be selling it as his pitch of it is just like you just get up and you do it and it's miserable and uh, you die and. That's- <laughs> Yeah, it's part of the fucking... And you're like, why... On what point do you think we're going to be like, you know, like, sign me up for this? Yeah, there's a there's a fucking... There's a, like... Did your dad want you to do anything? Like, did he... Like, was he leading no, you? No, no, You see, I've had this conversation twice this week with, with you and with Mark McCarney, where you're like... Uh, I th- you know, like... You know, you're, you're saying your parents aren't that into you doing comedy, and I was talking to McCarney, and his parents aren't that sure about it either. Yeah. And my in my case, it's like any input at all would be great. Any feedback at all. I think I had too much. For, like I could do whatever the fuck I wanted when I was like a teenager. Yeah. And I would be I would be really good at stuff, sports yeah. and stuff, and just not fancy it one week and just not go back. Mm-hmm. You know, because I wasn't interested in. It. You know, be like ah, I'm playing football there and fucking doing pretty well and getting medals for fucking scoring tons of goals and and just be like I don't really like that anymore. Yeah. And I did judo. Was good at that. Left out at a time when I was a prob- If it had just stuck at it a bit longer, I would have. You still have a few of the moves. Well, I, I did jujitsu quite a bit later on, which I'd still love to do a lot more of. But I just there's it's fucking difficult. But um, uh, but loads of things I was into and I was enjoying it, and then I would just get bored of it and quit, and no one would ever step in and go, "Oh, you should fucking stick at that." And yeah. I would change my mind. I'd be like, "Oh, I'm into this. I'm doing this, and fucking buy me a guitar and buy me a fucking." get a mountain bike and into loads of shit and then you know they probably were thinking like oh he's fucking he made some funny video and then oh he's doing stand up now apparently you know it's just a new thing that you're doing right but no one ever gave a fuck or asked or was interested or whatever you would just be off doing it you know yeah that's interesting because I think I I I had a little bit of a similar thing in, in terms of like once the farm was taken over by my younger brother uh uh, James, the keys, keys fella, and I want to reiterate, absolute legend, and the and the be- most capable by a mile. The rest was our fucking fairies, like you know, <laughs> like genuinely, just <laughs> like I mean, I, I honest to God, I shouldn't be allowed to live independently. I'm so I make so many mistakes in my life, but uh, so once he took the farm, that was like my father. We, the rest of us can join the circus. You know, yeah, like that's it. It don't, it don't matter what you do. But what you have no respect for, you know, say, say you fucking like plugged away for years, and you turn around to your dad and go like, I just fucking, I walk up there, and I talk for an hour, and fifteen hundred people paid thirty five euro to, to see me, and I'm doing fifty of those in a row. Have you, you know, yeah. have, have I not? Is that not good? 
if I was Joanne McNally, yeah. I think that I think at that point he would I think he gets a kick out of it to be honest. Like I think he is like my father more so than my mother because my father's looking on with more kind of like amusement because yeah. his his job has been done. The farm has been taken over. Yeah. That in the sides of children the, inbre has, the inbreeding has worked. The or whatever inbreeding you call has it. worked. James has married her cousin Philippa and it's all going to plan. He he married a cousin. He's getting married to her cousin, yeah. To one of your cousins? Yeah. I'm joking. He's not marrying. <laughs> up the raw. <laughs> <laughs> I just fucking had that up to you. I was nah. like, what? Nah, lad. Now, now I, I don't think it would be... I did actually say this, right? Because, right, my mother, right, has uh, 12 in her family, okay? And my granny had, like, 13, right? Mm -hmm. And my father had say, and like my other granny had fourteen, and everyone stayed around Kilkenny where I'm from. And I said to my mother one day, I was like, uh, "Jesus," I said, "Sure, I'm probably going to end up like um, uh, fingering one of my cousins or something." I didn't say fingering now, but I, I said I'm going to end up like shifting one of my cousins. And my mother said, "You probably will, yes." <laughs> She just does no, like. That's how we keep the farm in the fucking. Like, that that's how we keep the bloodline. Because your yeah. dad said he calls it breeding. You know, be closer to inbreeding. At a <laughs> yeah, certain yeah. point, you know. Well, yeah. I mean, I think, to be honest, my father would. I mean, he he. Would, I think he'd get a kick out of it if if we were flogging one of our cousins. You really? know. Ah, yeah. Jeez. If he got to watch. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I just imagine, you know, like if he if nobody took that farm. Would he just walk out then I'll shed someday and just fucking, <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, lad. I've worked my whole life. Nobody wants it. Just fuck out. <laughs> lad, I'm not absolutely not sure. It would have been like Tarantino-esque <laughs> bloodbath. Just like Kill Bill, just ice cream and fucking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the sort of, there's just the ice cream hits the floor. Bits of fucking 99 just spraying out the ears like a, the fucking flake. Put a flake in it. Yeah. Oh, fucking hell. No, lad, I, I, he, like, he has 100% alluded to that, to that very scenario. Um, 100%. And I, it, it, it's not even worth thinking about if no one took the farm. Yeah. Where it, where, where things might have gone. Cause it, it could have got bleak as be jesus you know and what's um, the bit what is it is it like dairy is that the fucking yes dairy yeah it's milk yeah yeah which is like the hardest well not that it's kind of that's why i was about, to, I was about to ask like what's what's the toughest type of farm and it's definitely the fucking it's, muckiest probably it's dairy because like tillage is like these are lads these are fucking out cowboys up on fucking tractors with their fucking three liter bottle of coke so yeah fucking, like they're really doing fucking nothing you know what i mean like dairy you're you're out there Every single morning, every single night, you're up at half six, forever. Yeah. When oh, and when when did you have a day off? I don't. Yeah. Don't have one. Just forever. And my father hates milking cows. Mm -hmm. Has always hated, and has done it every morning, every evening since he was like. And how seven. long? How long does that process take? With. Would well, I we we just got we got a uh, a new parlor, so it's like uh, it's like two hours, uh, like an hour and a half now. But it would like be before that, it could be two and a half, three, and it's just a slog. But do you, you think know? do you think that sort of DNA in you, like when we ran into you at the fringe, and you're like, oh, fuck, well, I'm fucking two shows and then an hour and yeah. then I go sleep in a fucking bin out the back of the place <laughs> and, then, and then I have another fucking and then I have another solo show and then a comp show and I was yeah. like we have one show yeah. with four people doing 15 minutes and, yeah. and I've, I've been here two days and I'm like fuck this shit I need yeah. to go home but do yeah. you think do you think that's part yeah. of the thing where you're like oh sure just get stuck into it absolutely oh, yeah. it'll be done when it's done that's right but also I can't I'm very bad with uh, leisure time because I have my father's just and I'm not an efficient worker like yeah. you're like you're an efficient individual and a productive person like I'm just kind of like constantly anxious that I should be doing shit um, so I can't like I couldn't possibly watch <coughs> like a TV show really in the middle of the day or I couldn't possibly just let myself but I am I am like that too yeah I'm like that you know like I fucking go about all day going like man I just fucking I'm gonna go to fucking I'm gonna go to Dubai yeah. Just sit by a pool And then Without noticing I'll just have a day Where I'm like Oh I actually have nothing to do today 
and then I feel I'm like, oh geez, what am I doing? That's I, right. I, like I fa- I fill the gaps naturally, like yeah, with stuff. I'm like I should be writing. I should be writing stuff right now. I should be oh getting onto people. I uh, should be editing this video. I'm uh, blah blah blah, and I just can't uh, relax because I even like I remember when we were younger and we'd be. Uh, watching TV or anything you just hear my father's kind of like a dementor like you'd feel the cold hit you you know before he came in and uh, and he'd be like you know he'd be like yeah you're watching television in the middle of the day like you're like old cows just lying around and shitting and eating you know it was this kind of language you know but that's always then just in my head there's a real inbuilt guilt yeah where it's like I ah, Jesus I need to be fucking doing something because he would always be out there yeah you know work but he was extremely inefficient himself but he was just there and he's just kind of tapping away at our yokes and you know he'd never really fin he wouldn't finish things really but he'd just be kind of out and he'd love just you know he'd have oil just splattered on his face and the, the yoke be half cut as always he loved the narrative like he'd like you know he was almost like it's kind of like Mussolini almost like the <laughs> Do you remember that, lad? Do you, do you remember Mussolini? Yeah. Barty Mussolini. Do you remember? Uh, <laughs> yeah, Barty Mussolini. He, uh, but Mussolini would leave the light on in his office all night so that when people went by, they think that uh, Mussolini was flat out working. Yeah. My father wouldn't do that, but he'd just tell you, I've been working all day and all night. Now, a lot of the time, he was just on his, the phone to his friend, Frank Grace, his best friend, and he'd yeah. be like hiding in the bail shed, just fucking, you know, yeah. talking to Frank. What are you uh, wearing? <laughs> <laughs> did you polish those wellies did you <laughs> did you get a new screwdriver where's the first place you're gonna put it you know uh, so uh, like he'd be at that like, I remember I, I used to think he was working so hard I remember the first time I saw I remember I was in the bathroom and I saw a pair of um, underwear on the ground and there was a little skid mark in underwear first time I'd ever seen it now and the father just threw it, mm. thrown it in there Nice. And I thought in my head, I thought, this man's working so hard. He doesn't even have time to go for a shit. <laughs> Honestly, I just thought he was just walking around. Like Louis XIV <laughs> apparently used to do that, the French king. He'd just walk around and literally just you shit should. as he went and there'd be people come after him. Oh, that's good. Cr- like just as he's walking, they have to come up just cleaning his hole. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> he has a spreader. And yeah. <laughs> but I thought, I was like... I thought in my head, I was like, my, he's just, he's just, he doesn't have time and he's just letting rip because it's yeah. just, that's the, that's the, and I remember then after that, I'd look at him in the farmyard sometimes and I'd be like, are you shit, are you doing it right now? And I thought it was like greatness. I thought. Probably wasn't even his shit. Huh? It? it probably wasn't even his own shit. It, it probably wasn't. Just it sat, was, sat in some shit. He probably just sat in a load of shit and I had all this in my head. But then, as a young lad, like to equate greatness with shit in your own pants is not a healthy you see, idea. Uh, I think I very think, achievable. Then, I right? think this. when you're like someone's dad, you take on that role of you fucking lazy bastards lying about here. My dad was the same. Yeah. And nobody enjoys an old fucking box set and a fucking you know, wee bowl of pistachios like my dad. Yeah. Three balls of red wine. Would he? Oh, he'd, he'd be like, oh, I'm watching. Uh, all the Harry Potters again or something <laughs> and you're like where the fuck do you have time to do that he doesn't you know what I mean loves it loves yeah, a chill yeah. loves getting home fucking you know getting cleaned up and fucking getting the getting the fucking sweatpants on and you know watching a bit of telly he'd put sweatpants on would he oh I, yeah I think my father would sooner do that thing we were talking about in the shed yeah than put, then sweat put sweatpants on. on yeah he would see that now as really kind of <clears throat> having having given up we see my my dad he was like a fitter you yeah know, he would like make bits for fucking planes and shit and he would be stinking like but he was meticulous with the cleaning and he'd be fucking at the door like clipping his nails and all like he was, really he, yeah it was almost like ocd with the you know like let me wash off every uh, bit of evidence that i've ever stepped set foot in was he into know. his appearance or dad like did not he, like, overly no but just just he was wearing sweatpants you know but yeah yeah he uh no not really but just wee things like that yeah he would be weird about yeah my dad now, I mean, he just, he, he he wears what my mother gets him. I'd say, was your dad like that? Like, where, like, as in, like, she buys him all his clothes. She gives him his money. She nah, does, like... Not really. See, my dad... Like, knew, I, was, I was buying my own clothes. Really? Early doors, like, yeah. 
So I would like, you know, when you get to the point where you can like, uh, you can get the bus in the town by yourself mm. with your mates. I was buy, I was like buying my own clothes. That makes sense. You've got a distinct look. Oh. You know. Yeah, kind of like hats, hoodies, like. You oh know, yeah, like, I yeah. I dress like a thirteen-year-old who, <laughs> who's been allowed to buy his own clothes for the first time. Uh, but um, but again, that goes back to the very, you know, very like just fucking do whatever you want. Just get out of here. Yeah. So away you go. Yeah. Go into town and buy yourself a t-shirt. But, but is it like, are you, are you happy? Like, without that, imagine if you were like, because I think if, when I see some people whose like fathers were like highly influential in their path mm. and was like, this is what you do to be a man. This is what you should, an occupation you're suited for, blah, blah, blah. And then, and then they don't have the, the freedom to go do something like, well, here's, here's a beautiful oh, example of it, right? I was talking to R. McCann recently, and he, you know, he, he has a lot of older siblings that were obviously all conceived in a in a time window. Yeah. And then, like, he, what age is he? He's like 28 or something, and his next sibling is like fucking 40 or something, 40-something. Right. So there's a big old gap, and his dad was in show business, so he pushed all the kids into, like, you know, get get all his brothers and sisters have like great fucking jobs dentists and this and that and barristers and all this shit and then they took the foot off the pedal a bit and then they had Aaron and he probably had a lot more freedom than the other ones Absolutely. and sure enough he's a fucking he's in show business yep you know and pretty fucking successful at it did so the far. father not want that he didn't want people to have that life I think he was probably just like if you want it but I would seriously you know it's not the fucking it's not the easiest Mm. you know path to go down did you ever have anything else oh yeah I that you thought you could do I could do fucking you could do I could You're do a capable anything. man I could do like I, I I always think about that like if you just you know it's like Jenga from like I just take a brick away yeah how many bricks have I got loads of bricks bro yeah do you know what I mean like any 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 little uh, element of like say like we're doing a podcast mm. I could this is an awful setup today I could probably do people's podcasts i could make videos for people i've made ads for people you know what i mean you're like i could take the comedy right out of it and do that probably yeah if push came to shelf and you're an entrepreneur if i ever get cancelled yeah and it will you will yeah pick a fucking episode bro <laughs> tear away if someone come to me and like can you believe what he said i'd be like nah you're in the fuck you're in the wrong episode bro you need to go <laughs> i'd be like yeah. you need to go back you need to go back there's worse than that yeah jesus <laughs> i haven't said that bad as shit like really to be honest yeah, I I'd say, yeah, I, I t to be honest as well. At this stage, people know what they're coming for. Uh, I don't say, that. yeah, but I don't say. It. I mean, you know, you try and if you're saying a thing that's like really harsh, I think if you can't really like, if it's kind of true, I'll I'll just be stand behind it. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Like it'd be, but you pick you you know you pick your targets. Mm. Had great jokes about Jimmy Savile, you know you, the people that you can just fucking ah yeah let fly out just fucking lay into them. So, did you do videos before stand up? Mm -hmm. Is that right? I'll so, I'll, yeah. So I'll I'll tell you about how I got in, and then you can tell me. So like, I was like very arty, right? So went wanted to go to art college. Was told if I went to Belfast um, art college and did like a foundation year. I could get into anything. Did the foundation year, applied for like visual communication, didn't get in. I was like, what the fuck did I do that year for then? I thought that was the, the deal. And then very last minute went to Derry to go to McGee and they, have, they had a course called um, Design and Communication, which is, is quite clever. They let you do a little bit of everything. So yeah. you do like graphic design, move an image, animation, fucking blah, blah, blah. Um, and then you pick what you like and you sort of do a bit of a project at the end and mm -hmm. I, I made a video for that because I'd never made a video ever and then I made one and I was like fuck this is, this is some crack you can kind of do whatever you want in a video yep. and then I made like the I Am Fighter video after that which kind of blew up and the next sort of four or five were very popular and then the BBC came to me like oh would you want to be in this show and then I met like Mickey and Shane and all those other guys and then were they was, already doing stand up they were point? yeah and I remember like and were they good already uh, well, Mickey was always good, like yeah. you know. But um, and I, I could, it fucking, I couldn't even believe it. And it's uh, like you would never think up here, like, oh, I would like to do stand up. I never had that thought ever. Um, but I remember being in the Empire one day when my mates were watching football, 
and I went downstairs and I remember someone saying, oh, they do stand up in the Empire. And I was in this room, like looking around and there was a stage under the fucking screen where the football was being played. And I, was, and I just, you know, when your brain just disappears for a second and I was just imagining being on stage and I nearly had a fucking panic attack and I'd never done stand up ever in my life at that point, but I was just kind of hanging about with these boys and um, went to Newcastle to a gig with Mickey. And he got up and he had a bunch of fucking, you know, he's all, he was always like, you know, he was always just ah, fucking loving the, loving the, the stage time yeah, and hitting them with fucking wee jokes and all and killing. And I just remember being like, where the fuck did you practice this? You know, it was like, well, how do you yeah. get good at this shit? Um, and then just, uh, I think it was like inevitable that you would end up getting on stage and then just, I don't know, that was it. Kept doing it yeah. for a long time. He, uh, Mickey, Mickey is enjoying it up there so much that it's like um just infectious you just can tell he is but and, buzzing. I, and i'm glad i don't have what he has which is he needs it you know he's like you know he'll fucking drag himself out of bed and come down the laveries with a hangover i'm like can i do five like this is gonna cure me can yeah. I, let me do let me do something let me go up like he needs it i don't i don't need that like as like i love doing it but i don't like fuck like yeah. During the pandemic and all that shit, I wasn't like, man, get me on a stage. That's right. I was like, well, I just can't do it now. And when I can do it, I'll do it. Yeah, I'd be honest, I was grand. I yeah. was grand not doing it. Yeah. Um, when it came back, I was like, I I, wa I had a renewed love of it just because it was novel again. Yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, this class. But I was fine. Yeah. You know, to be honest, when the pandemic happened, I had kind of, going into the pandemic, I had gotten a bit sick of it. Mm. I'd been just doing it for like at that stage um five years five and a half years and just non-stop and i was just as in every night for yeah. five years almost and i had just gotten to a stage of like i was just no longer excited yeah. about it yeah and actually when the pandemic hit i was kind of fucking relieved yeah it was a bit of relief yeah that like I could take a break i think for me it's like like I love doing it, but it's it's very distracting in your life. I almost need like a season, like a like an athlete. Yeah, I do stand up from fucking this to this, and then I don't do it here. Yeah, because I'm like a mental sort of thing where I'm like I would love to just not have a something anything to do at night time for like two months of the year. Apparently, Louis um, would do a month off. Like this is back in the day when he was doing like this impossible uh, amount of output. So he had the show, he had he was doing like one special a year, but he would take one month a year where he would do nothing uh, I creative. Think, I think that's what I meant. And do. then just kind of load up on whatever the fuck. Yeah. Uh, and that's the thing, like, you know, you would that doesn't switch off. So like on my phone during the pandemic, I was like, I'm not doing stand up, don't really care that I'm not doing it right now. Yeah. And the, the notes were just, just racking up, just racking up. And then we did a private gig in here which I think was illegal, but um, I was fine. I was like, I'm ready to go here. I fucking, I think I did like 20 minutes. It was all new. Really? Yeah. And it just kind of felt fresh and fun. And everybody else was like bricking it. And I was like, fuck, I don't know how this is going to go. And it was like, fine. It was like, I did it yesterday. It was just like s scary, but it was like, it's sort of, ha it's like happening in the background, the material and the ideas and everything. Yeah. Whether you fucking are using it or not. Yeah, I did. My first one was after, I think it was it was like six or seven months. And like, to be honest, it was just like, I, I did the same. I did, uh, I probably did half new and half old, but um, but it was fucking, it was grand. Like yeah. it was, it was just like, ah, yeah. So you're not going to fucking forget how to do it. Like, you know? Yeah. I mean, there's, yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. You felt the feelings before. I mean, I feel sorry for guys like, Mark McCartney who was gigging with her during the week but and tonight again but he he'd been doing stand up for two years then the pandemic hit and he's for like the experience that he has yeah he's beyond his years I think absolutely yeah. Um, and you're he's like right. fuck if he hadn't if he'd packed another two in there he'd be on down that road a bit yeah but he's a he's a sort of guy like you know you see him the first set he ever did in Lavery's was one of the best sets I've ever seen in my life Really, he, he nearly got a fucking stand ovation. I was just like, "Who the fuck is this guy?" Like, and that was mostly as in how how long was he into stand up then? I don't I don't know at that point. But, yeah, but fuck all. He, he he again he did what I did, which was like start making videos and then eventually end up doing ah, stand up. Ah, right. Do you um, ever feel jealousy with something like that? 
or like in general in comedy do you feel do you feel envy towards people ever um envy I, I get jealous of like bits like i've said that they are and like he's told me a premise to a bit and i'm like fuck you man what you're yeah. or like sometimes i'll see we seen louis the other night in the, in the limelight and he's doing bits and i'm like was that just and the same happens with music with like riffs and stuff you go was that just there yeah and nobody picked it up yeah like he's doing you know oh, i'm doing bits about shit that it says in the bible but it's so funny and you're like well all that all he's done there is actually read it you know and it's full of fucking funny bits like yeah um, god it, it never ends the jesus stuff like as in like you would think that okay that's all been done but people keep finding yeah like new stuff that is genuinely uh hilarious do you, do you get jealous of other things um yeah i get i i think i just get i i think i get jealous um night night of i get jealous of my for some reason i get jealous more of my friends than other people i maybe that's natural you know um maybe, maybe. but because you know them and you're like he's a cunt <laughs> yeah, I know they're nasty pieces of work. I know they're pieces of shit. Uh, I think I realized over the years, like no, nobody gets things for nothing either. You know, like if yeah, or if they do well, or if they uh, get a thing or whatever. You're like, it, it hasn't really come out of nowhere. That's right. You know, they've yeah. they've been at it long enough, and they've put themselves out there and whatever. Yeah, and they're getting a thing. I think the je well, see, I think jealousy in general, like that. I think that comes from like probably like some kind of low self esteem in yourself because. Uh, in fact, I know it does, like, because you're just viewing, he's good, so I'm bad. That's, I think, that's mm. a lot of that feeling is. But that's, I think, I sometimes get that. It's just a feeling, like, because jealousy things a feeling like hunger or anything else. It just comes up in you, um, and then how you fucking deal with it is what defines you. Like, whether like you feel jealous, and then you're like, I'm gonna fucking, you know, uh, with withhold something from them because I, of this, or whether you just uh, see it, and then you're like, Ah, Jesus, why am I feeling like that? You know. I shouldn't be that. Well, like my friend. I don't. I don't know what the actual definitions are, but like, envy is fine. Yeah. But like, jealousy is the nasty one. Yeah. Like you could definitely look at somebody and be like, "Fuck, I'd love a bit of that." Right. But and it's like almost like inspiring. Yeah. But jealousy is like where you're like, "Fuck, this cunt," you know? Is Why it, have I got? Is, so is that right? Because in my head, I was like, jealousy is like a feeling of like of where you're like, um, ah, oh, you know, where it's like, I'm just that, but. Uh, but maybe it's the action of like just being like acting jealous where you're like oh this fucking you know as in you're acting on that feeling you know what I mean mm. yeah I don't know I don't know I've had a bit of a shift in the last year because I've been exposed to so much like high end comedy so like Kevin Hart was over and that sort of shattered a few illusions for me in a good way where I was yeah. just like man it's just it is it's literally like if you can get a crowd to laugh for 60 minutes it doesn't actually really matter how you do that yeah and there are certain people we were like jesus christ that's fucking genius mm. but it's just like there are a million ways to do it's the same thing you know oh yeah even though he's kevin hart did you were you blown away by it when you saw him like were you like jesus no but that's what i mean that's in a good way right but fair play to it i mean it was the work ethic is insane like he had absolutely no need to be to do 24 shows while he was here f also filming a movie what was the movie he was doing it's called Lift it's it's obviously not out yet but it, it's like a Netflix movie but it's a Northern Irish no. base or they just no, had but a they, tax break for filming here so. yeah that's that's been going on here for a while you know ah. the Game of Thrones and all that shit right I think they can do it a lot cheaper over here this fucking barber I had here this Nightmare Barber um, I had so I was here for I was telling you that yesterday but I was here for the BBC New Comedy Award in August and uh, I, had, I wanted to get a haircut because I'm going on TV so you got some fucking butcher I, I got this lad like wait, the first thing that comes up on Google now I don't I don't want to like lose him uh, <laughs> business rant but uh, the first thing comes up on uh, Google now I would find out later I read the Google reviews like that were getting you on the top yeah. And it's like every one of them was like in broken English because he is from like the Black Sea. It's like greatest barber that the cut the Black hair. Sea? Um, I think it's around East Russia. Belfast. Have a look at have a <laughs> yeah down the east. Uh, I think it's I think it's around the the kind of Russian area there somewhere. That's what he sounded like. But 
Anyway, I goes into him and all tanned, like super tanned, super buff, this big fucking quaff of hair. The the, the barber had been closed. Ah, so I yes. I went to it and there was, do, do you know where the Black Sea is? It's sort of flanked by like Turkey, Georgia, Russia, Ukraine, Bulgaria. That fucking checks out, lad. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. He anyway, uh, yeah, the barber was closed. So all shuttered up. Um, I come in, I text your man, I'm like, because I booked it from the day before, from being in Edinburgh, and I was like, oh, what's going on here? He's like, oh, he's like, I'll come now, i come now. He runs out from the Costa Coffee across the road, uh, you know, runs over. And anyway, we go into the thing. At start, he's giving me all these big hugs and everything. Mm-hmm. He's just like, he's like, how oh, are you? Yeah, very, very positive. Like, Because um, you would maybe pass as like a Syrian. I think there is there is an element of me right now that is quite Kurdish, yes. Kur- yeah, like a Dagestani. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like I could be look like if you saw a documentary about like Khabib. Yeah, you need like, to get you need to get the mustache off. That's what you need. Right. You just you keep oh. that. You keep that bit. Jesus, that would be all right. Yeah. Do you ever see any of those docs about like Khabib and his mate and his fellas? Yeah. And they're just like they're all just bros. Not one woman in sight. Yeah. They're just praying together, eating together. Yeah. And he's like pointing to it. This is the river where uh, six people drown because they try to swim, uh, swim against current. I swim against current. Children still do it today to prove manhood, but a lot of them die. And you're like just going around and it's, oh, f- it seems kind of sick. Yeah. Like it kind of part of me is like. But that's like, why they're so good. There's no distractions. You and know they're I mean? playing the, the, that basketball that they play where they're just fucking hammering into each other. Yeah. Like it's just like. It's like hurling, like, you know? Like, fucking crazy. But uh, anyway, yeah, so your man's from that fucking neck of the woods. He's giving me all these hugs. He's telling me, he's, 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 like, he's like, life is about love. You love, you give energy, good energy to each other, about the human beings, it's great. And then he started saying, he's, uh, I was like, oh, how long are you living here now? And he's like, I've been in Belfast since the 92. But uh, he's like, the people here, Ireland, English, you a lot of hate in your heart. A lot of hate in your heart. Uh, I don't know what is wrong. It is when they grow up, they do not get this love. And now then you come out and it comes out spitefully. Now, I learned later that he, he moved here for a lady and she left him. So uh, he kind of, uh, yeah. This fat bitch from, <laughs> this fat bitch from Glen Gormley, uh, she is thinking, <laughs> she smells like chips. She, uh, she disgusting. Is she disgusting and uh, apparently she like her uh, her cousin more than she like me and uh, she go. <laughs> Most days I, I shape my beard and moustache and then I shape hers and uh, <laughs> it's not a good sign. She one of the most repulsive individuals I, I ever meet and she leave me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> she leave me and I said. <laughs> so anyway, we're going in. We're, we're yapping away and this lad is uh so he's all on about but he's all on about like he tells me i have good energy though he's like oh, he's wow. like you have great energy beautiful i'm like oh thank you and great and then he puts on let's be put on he's like what music you want we put on kanye west he fucking cutting my hair anyway and he's talking about all these big ideas about love and humanity and all this shit and then i was telling you he started showing me a video of him playing uh, the electric guitar just mm. with his shirt like splayed open and just like he's like have a look at this what do you think of that I'd, I'd have loved that yeah. <laughs> I'd have been right into that yes lad that's out like fucking sick shredding it man yeah, and he what like he's just him like that he had sunglasses shirt open and he and I you know you're just like in these experiences like that kind of surreal you're just like oh cool like yeah. class you're playing guitar and uh Next thing he was talking about, he was like, Kevin Hart was here uh, two weeks ago. He says, after I give him haircut, he says, best haircut he's had. Oh, Kevin Hart was in there, was yeah. he? Uh, bet, Kevin bet. Hart was in, best haircut he's had. Afterwards, we hang out for two, three hours, talk about philosophy, talk about life. We have a good time. Nice. I, and at this, you're like, did you know? Kevin, Kevin Hart there with that famously open schedule of his. Uh. Uh, so I was like, all right, grand. And anyway, I don't know what. I like you, man. You, you know, like, yeah. you want to hang out for fucking two, three hours? I like, like your, I like your energy, man. You like uh, Eddie Van Halen? I play guitar. <laughs> so anyway, he, uh, so anyway, I don't know what got in his head, but some old wasp got in his head anyway. And anyway, it starts going about, there's no love in this country. And 
the government and they want to take from us everything and these anti-vaxxers well. it's like oh. they, they want to put this shit in our blood this is our bodies can we not see and then the Illuminati and as he's doing this in anger then he just fucking chopped right across my fringe and just plays now I was going on TV that night I couldn't even like lad I I, t- I, I like I couldn't breathe I couldn't breathe I was like, <gasps> I don't know genuinely I went I, I couldn't I was like my heart like I was like oh, for and, and before I tried I was telling him I, I told you this yesterday and this is how you get just bamboozled by people's confidence I had told him I was like listen I'm going on TV tonight so what I want you to do I don't want you to really change my hair I just want you to tidy I, don't, don't say anymore don't say anymore I know exactly what you want and I read your mind I read, just read uh, your mind your father was a uh, doctor right so uh and then, do you know when you're just like someone so confident, you're just I, I guess he knows what I want then. Yeah. Even though I've not told him, I'm just like, all right, thank you for that. So, anyway, he chops across the yoke, and I, I sort of got, I go, <gasps> like I was like, I mean, I, I was going to be, I felt, I, I genuinely felt violated. Like that was probably one of the in my life. Like it felt like I had been one of my main violations. Absolutely. It's like, a, do you have a picture of it? Huh? Do you, did you take a picture at the time? Of what? Like my the hair. hair? Well, it's on. It, 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 there'd be footage of it on the BBC or whatever. Oh no! I, do you know what? Lad? I fucking did with you with the fucking short fringe, yeah. like one of I did because I sent it. Guards. I sent it to some people, so I, I I'll be able to show you after. I left my phone on my bag over there, but so he does that. I can't. I can barely breathe uh, at this stage, and then I kind of tell him like, because I didn't want him to really touch my beard, and he'd already started like do doing this thing, and and I just go, no, don't touch. I said, don't touch my beard because I, I didn't. I I didn't want you to do my. Fringe, and he's like, "Your fringe." He's like, "No, no, no." And he's like, "He's like, you'll see, you'll see." I never saw, <laughs> I never saw. He gave me like, do you know, like Jim Carrey and Dumb and Dumber. Do you know that? Just like, yeah. <laughs> like just numpty. You, this, uh, this haircut is an investment. <laughs> you cut now and you, you wait for three, four months, and it will be back stronger than ever. It's stronger than ever. Thick, luscious. You get many women, you know. Maybe my ex-wife with the beard. She like <laughs> for you. Uh, Glenn Gormley, you know. This, uh, bad people, hate and heart. No love, no love. Uh, so anyway, he does, he, he, he does that. Next thing, he wheels me over to the fucking, this, uh, this shampoo place. I haven't asked for a shampoo. I haven't asked for none of this lad puts my head back and at this stage i just can't i i know this sounds crazy but like i can't even yeah say i, I can't even say that i'm just he puts puts me back he starts he starts doing this face massage like just like deep into my fucking like just into my face i'm like i, I didn't even know what he's like the head like this i'm like just frightened lad next thing he puts this fucking uh this like warm towel on my head mm. now the only thing he's leaving uh, open there is uh my mouth and like so I can't see it at this stage and then I'm lying back like this I can't see it and then I hear him start up some machine and I swear on my life I thought he was going to kill me oh. like I just that was my talk because I was like in my head I was like why was the why was the hairdresser closed when I first came like what like everything in my head now starts to move and of, I'm like of all I mean the place is fucking coming down with barbers like yeah and you get some psychopath who Lad, just does it for fun I, I don't I don't I, I don't even know what the crack is here and maybe for other people it's a great part but I didn't know none of this was happening so then eventually I, I was like even when I thought I was going to I was like can I get up and just like and just say I've had enough that I don't want anymore but I was like no because how weird will that be if he's not about to kill me and then so anyway I waited out I get up and then he says to him he's like I'm also the licensed chiropractor oh and, yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh of course he is <laughs> yeah of course he is. And he fucking gets me in the thing. Uh, cracks my... And again, I can't even say nothing. Then he brings me over to the oak and he goes, uh, that will be 60 pounds. Then you threw up there, do you hear that? Lad. I mean... 60? 60 pounds. And at this stage, like, this was like the final nail in the cut co- of, like, me just being... I couldn't breathe. I was like, 60 pounds. Did, did you pay him? I did. Just because I couldn't... Lad, I, I didn't want to be there for another second. So... I, I like 60 yeah, quid yeah and I go 60 he's like yes shampoo you do it. I had asked for none of that right so I just 
needed to get out of there and he goes he goes no he goes um you know pay me until i'm going to go get us uh, coffees while i go for coffee you leave a google review and then uh, we come back we have the coffee we chat and, uh, oh my and i was like you've just got some absolute lunatic by uh, himself. and i was like lad he's one step away from me like there is secret bone in, <laughs> in coccyx when I put my finger in anus and I click, I click, and it will release all tension in your body. Yeah, absolutely, bro. Absolutely. What a fuck! I mean, where was this in Belfast? So it was. I I I can't pinpoint the exact place, but fairly central, and across from Acosta. Now I don't like the thing is now I'm reticent when I'm saying this that like how if somehow this was my fault I don't want to be like you know fucking ruining someone's. Uh, business ran but by jesus i lad i was shook two hours later i met like uh jordan robinson and robbie mcshane before doing the bbc oh and i was still shook like shook lad rattled like just fucking just i was like eh, just kind of still jittery over it yeah nasty that is psycho I, i'm dying to know where it is i'm gonna look it up after this but that happened to me in thailand i went i went to like it's a great system in Thailand. You, know, you buy drinks and they just they take the cup away and then they change the receipt and then they bring it back. That's your tab. You just have the tab changed every time instead of like oh, right. paying for it. And uh, obviously you go fucking ape shit. You're like, yeah, fucking, bah! and she just keeps bringing the new tab back. And I went into the the toilets and there's just little. I, I didn't even know if he was like working or he was just in there because he was kind of like fixing his own hair. And then he was like standing. He was like, yeah, how's it go? And it, you know, like I'm walking around like fucking like a polar bear in Thailand you know what I mean just like uh, uh, and that uh, this fucking this guy's like uh, he's like oh you big you big and he's fucking like grabbing my shoulders and then he just got my head and just went, and did one of those fucking you know the fucking big uh, chiropractor type moves what and I was pet I was steaming so I was like Whoa, what the fuck was that bro and then he did, and then he sort of was like, I'll do it the other way. And I was like, nah, fuck him, fuck him, bro. And then he went for the, you know, like the full Nelson, like up under your armpits and around the back of your head. Yeah. And he was trying to go like, and crack me up the way. And he, and he just couldn't, he couldn't even get his arms together. And then he was like, I was like, bro, you'll, I'll kill you. I was like, if I fall back, you're dead. Like, there's something funny about a failed attempt to do that. Like, yeah. he just, and then just, just can't. Yeah, like, where does he go? He just, like, he couldn't up. get up under the armpit and up yeah. around the neck and then do it again with the other thing. He was like, ah, trying to do this. And I was so drunk. I was just like, oh, oh, what's happening there? But the initial one, man, fucking. And at the time, felt great. Yeah. And then the next day, I was. But well, he's taking a lot of liberties there, like. I mean, he, he attacked me. And he, was, he wasn't particularly. You know, like this guy would offer you the service and they were like, 60 quid. He just did it and was like, have a good night, man. And I'm like, all right, cheers, see you later. Like, fucking. So, like, he kind of did it as, like, a, a I, kindness. I think he's just the neck crack guy in the in the toilets, isn't he? So, they have the, as opposed to, like, spraying shit on you. They've just. Oh, like, he had all, he had lots of shit. You know, he had fucking cold tiles and all. They were great, actually. It was like a little sachet and you, he popped it and it was, like, freezing cold. Because Thailand, obviously, it's like fucking 42 degrees. And you're like, oh, yes. But then, you know, just this fucking... Woke up the next morning. Like, the only the only other time I felt that is like when you go to like your first jujitsu classes and yeah. nobody squeezes your throat and then all of a sudden people are squeezing your neck and you wake up in bed and you're like... Ugh. You know, like your body gets out of bed and your head's still <laughs> on the pillow and you're like... Ugh. Fucking wow. Health and fitness. <laughs> Jesus. But, uh, Jesus Christ. Did you... um? A lot, a lot of good uh, sports people are farmers. Yeah, that's right. Your man, uh, Sean O'Brien. Sean O'Brien, Tag Furlong. Oh, Tag Furlong. Oh, lad. That lad's a bollocks. What do you mean? Furlong. A bollocks. Bastard. Really? Why? Well, we're spilling. I'm, a big, I, I'm I, a big fan, but go ahead. I had an, I had an experience with Furlong now. Um, when this is now, I was at 21st uh, when, I was, uh, when I was younger. And it was down in New Ross. Now this would be, and it was at New Ross Rugby Club. So this would be really now, fucking HQ now for Furlong's ego. Like he's the cock of the walk down there. Um, so anyway, I go to the twenty first, and uh, we're hanging around outside. And I've been told now, I've been warned about Furlong. Oh, I've really? been told by a few people. It's like, no, yeah, he's. A, they were like, yeah, he's. A, he, you know, he's a bit of an uh, an arrogant fucker, you know. And uh, I was like, oh, whatever, like, and he was stomping around there now, like, you know, 
like a fucking bull. But anyway, at one stage, anyway, he comes out to the smoking area and he goes, Does anyone have a lighter? I was like, By God, here's my chance now to befriend Furlong. Yeah. So I says, Yeah, yeah, I do, yeah. I hands him the lighter, lights his fag, just looks at me and just fucks it on the ground in front of me, right? And there was a load of people around as well, like at the time, and they were kind of like, Number one, he's smoking fags. Huh? That's that's the big story here. Yeah. Furlong on the steamers, lad. Yeah. Yeah. He fucking like a chimney. Couple of bangs for yeah. the big man. Absolutely. And just to spread rumors, he was on coke as well. No, I, <laughs> no. No, he was on flat out on fucking Charlie. Yeah. <laughs> and he was saying Brian O'Driscoll's gay. No. <laughs> Flat that's out on I was I was thought it was gonna happen on the pod too. No, it's rain, uh, rain forever. But so anyway, yeah, so he just fucking he, he fucked it on the ground. So that's my main reason now that I, I have a real axe to, to grind with him. But I had been told I'd been told that about him before, but it's just these guys like in a small town like that, like New Ross down in Wexford, like a lad like that now, his whole life, like, he just has lads be like, Jeez, Ty, you're the greatest fucking lad that ever was. Jeez, my wife, Ty, will you just ride my wife, please, Ty? You know, and then they grow, like, there's no other way for their fucking Is, owl. I don't know, you see, my own, you know, I'm trying to defend him here, don't know him, don't know his behaviour. Is that just the, did he, like, does he play, did he play at that club or something at one point? Oh, yeah, so that's where he's from, it, yeah. Well, it might just be they're all a bunch of fucking, you know, winding each other up and fucking don't about. You, don't be, you defend for long, It is It's fairly fucking... He shouldn't be on the fucking... On the bangs, anyway. He shouldn't be on the steamers. He should be looking after himself. But to be fair, this was now... When he was... This is... This is... This is ten years ago. Like, I mean, nine years ago. I am, like... He wasn't even, like, playing for... A, I Well, I think he was, like, a very up-and-coming prospect, but... Yeah. Um, you know, I am being very sour to air this in public. Like, there's no doubt about that. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm being rotten, you know? <laughs> but I think I just have a, I have a bit of an axe to grind with, with rugby players because I think, I, I went to college, like, in UCD and it was all, like, South Dublin, like, rugby lads. And, you know, and they wouldn't piss on you if you're on fire, you know? So I yeah. think I have, a, I think I have more than a little bit of a chip on my shoulder, mm. like, you know, mm. but you were a rugby player. Mm. Yeah, See, but I, but I, did, I hated. I, I realized what I liked was uh, sort of physical impact, you know, and rugby provided that. But yeah. I hated the fucking all the you know the fucking laddish banter, and I even hated like you know lads in the changing room all fucking huddled up. Come on, the fuck boy! I would just sit with headphones in, like the fuck are these boys doing? Like you can't, you can't just switch. I yeah. could just switch it on. Yeah. But they were like fucking hitting each other and screaming. Guy looking at them looking at himself in the mirror in the fucking chain room. <laughs> like this. And I was yeah. like, what, bro, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah, there's a cultish element to it. There really is. Like I remember and such meeting, such homoerotic behaviour outside. Like Unbelievable. Like I remember I remember meeting this fella from Munster. It was when we were like sixteen. I was on this like uh travel abroad thing to France and I remember he was just so he's just like I he was like I would die for Munster. <laughs> was this Tom O'Mahony? Well, <laughs> it was Tom the Bear O'Mahony. It was the first time I met him. And he was chewing on a, a timber sandwich. Uh, it, it's just that he was like, he's like, my blood runs red for Munster. And he's like, I would kill my firstborn for Munster. Like he was just going on with these, I would eat the arse of a dead goat for Munster. You know, like just this. Way, and you're just like, would you ever just. Yeah cop on to yourself you know yeah but there is that extremism with them. but in south dublin it's a bit different like they're like i would die for months until a french team offers me you know unless toulouse swings in uh, and then yeah. i would kill everyone in munster if yeah I were paid to do for so for 750 000 euros. Oh, jesus christ <laughs> fuck <laughs> 750 fucking shove it up my hole <laughs> uh, uh, farmers could uh, big hurling guy We'll wrap this up soon. I have two more questions for you. Yeah. No Bit of hurling? Oh, he's a big hurling fella, yeah. Grown up. Yeah, that was my... So that... And I think that you've you've tapped on, in a, uh, to something there is the the impact. I, like... That's one thing I, I'm so missing in my, like, current life is, like, is hitting people. An aggressive... Uh, Absolutely. Uh, release. Yeah, because uh, in my normal life, I'm compelled to be... Um, 
nice and in some way uh, decent um as like we, we all should be like or whatever but like there really is uh i you know <laughs> this sounds so cringy it's like i've I have an animal within Colin uh, but I do have like a side of me that's like Hurlan would let me get out which is mm. a truly murderous almost a murderous like you know I was I was a tramp I was really bad like the red mist yeah, yeah there was a badness in me like you know like I, what I'd be saying to lads on the pitch yeah and what I you know I'd be trying to break lads up like <laughs> I'd be trying to fuck fuck lads up yeah you know, genuine. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I never, in rugby, like I wasn't, I wasn't like a dirty player, but I, just, I fucking, I was like, you know, like t- top penalties. Now I'm like, give it to me, or like they, someone runs. I'm like, I'll, like I was just like, I fucking whether the ball's there or not. I'm just like, yeah. I just want to fucking. I don't even want to bend down into this top tackle. I just want to fucking <coughs> like my full face hit his face. I, I think it's bitch. Just debase yourself like just like, there's a there's some sort of a I don't know what it is but like it's the closest I've ever felt I feel to myself mm. I know that sounds like, but just in that like come on to, like that feeling of come on to fuck <laughs> you know and it's like but you know like, what's mad though no I would obviously even if I had that sort of upbringing w- wouldn't be near a game of hurling yeah you know oh yeah, yeah. you know your physique kind of yeah. Point you in a certain direction. That's, oh, that's absolutely right. Uh, oh, you would have been a good full back, lad. Uh, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. Until someone hit, fucking hit me in the fingers. <laughs> and I would just be like, ah! I, I still can't bend that. I'm like, I broke almost every yeah. every one of my hand. But then, but people would love you for it. They'd yeah. Like, like, they'd be like, you're so brave. I'd be like, I'm very brave. Like, yeah. Yes, you are. I'd be like, you know, there's yeah. something fucking... Jeez, it gets, it, me is jizzed, it, it gets me jizzed up even <laughs> thinking about it. It is sick when, you know, like, little jiu-jitsu boys were like, they're, well, it's the ears as well, and then, you know, if they'll do a lot of, like, gay jiu-jitsu, the, the fucking jacket thing on, Yeah, their fingers are, fu- there'd be a guy standing there, like, oh, he's world champion, he's, like, fucking 27, and he's the hands of, like, someone's, like, arthritic great granny. Yeah. Just fucked, can't yeah. do anything. Just, hey, you know, like. Yeah. But it's, like, fair But play. he's got memories of victory. Fair play to yeah, oh, fair With fucks. fucking carrots for fingers. Yeah, but... Just like, wrecked. I, I want... I don't know, like, there's just... I, I, I like, cause I want to do jujitsu now. I want to do some kind of... I, I, I've never done, like, combat sports. Mm. But I feel like I'd like to take some people down. Yeah. Do you know? Were you good, like? At? Jiu-jitsu. I, I was, I was de- decent for the amount I was doing it, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. And I was deceptively, like, quick and flexible for a big fat cunt. That got a lot of people, you know. Like Chris Farley. Yeah. Yeah. The Chris Duke Farley. Like, the, the, Chris white, <laughs> the white belt Chris Farley. Yeah. <laughs> Just fuck it, yeah. Yeah. But I would, you know, I would, I would, like, I would roll like I had no strength. You know, oh, we're just playing. And then when I needed it, I'd be like, oh, bitch, you forgot. <sighs> I'm 19 and a half stone, bro. <laughs> you know, just like... You are not 19 and a half stone. Oh, yeah. What? Oh, yeah. Fucking hell. On the keto? No. Uh, fucking carry it, though, like, fucking... Well, I'm evenly thick all over, you know? Yeah. I've got big legs and all that shit. Um, but... Yeah, I do see... You know, I'll, I'll talk to certain people that I know that are, you know, morbidly obese. Yeah. And they're they're not that much heavier than me. Yeah. Maybe be like one stone heavy. I'm like, oh. Oh, damn. Yeah. We will wrap this up very shortly. Here's my last question. Yes. Would you like to do stand up forever? Uh yes, I would, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would because um I I I have nothing else. Nothing else going for me. Will you let that farm slide? So I let the I let, I've I've thought about I've thought genuinely about what else I could do. Yeah. And uh, and maybe it's a problem with self belief, but like you know, you're a, you're a man, you're a jack of all trades. There now, you've got a lot of skills going on, and you're capable. I this is basically the only it's the only thing I can do really. Now that's not this, you know. I I I used to do door to door sales. I was I was good at that, but it completely makes you want to kill yourself. Yeah. But and I just I like. I like I love it. It is my favorite thing to do. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like if I had my ideal day, 
when, like doing my bet, having my favorite day, I would do a set. Yeah. In that day, and so, um, I couldn't see why I'd ever stop. Um, I, I'd like just have it. I'd like to have some, fucking, good specials to show for myself, mm. at the end, um, and I would like to like, get to a place where I'm like you or other comedians that are like you know, you know able to make a proper living so that I could have a family like I w- that's the thing I would like mm-hmm. I would like to have a family so I need to make a lot more money to do that um that's the only thing mm. but yeah I'll do it I'll families ruin everything don't they yeah 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 you're you've been as soon as those kids thing. come along you're like man I need to really take myself seriously now yeah but is that not good like in my mind and, and maybe this is the wrong way to look at it in my mind they uh, children would fucking make me better well yeah they, they give you they, they you know like sometimes you're like oh my god i'm gonna fucking walk into the sea here but it, you have a lot more purpose then yeah you know because I, I noticed this because obviously like our kids nearly three yeah and you, when see when you're at home you're like right gotta get up gotta do the thing gotta fucking go off do some work gotta come back gotta sort him out gotta get him to bed i've gotta get to bed because I'll be getting up and doing the same shit again. And then even that trip to Edinburgh, which is pro- probably the longest I've been away, which is like 10, 12 days or something. And you're by yourself and you go, what, the f- what do I do? Like, what what do I do? Right. You know? You're yep. like, I can't really be arsed doing work, but I've no reason to... You know, like, there's a couple of nights where I, I just couldn't drink multiple days in a row because it would do nothing to me. So I was like, all right, lads, you just go out. I'll just fucking chill. And I'm still up to fucking four o'clock in the morning because no, I had not, I had no reason to like, yeah, go to sleep or do any of that sort of shit. So, uh, it it does give you like purpose and a bit of structure. Is there a relief? Uh, this is something I've in my head about. Is there a relief to not just be living your life for yourself anymore? Like, because I'm, that's a problem I have. I think of just I'm just kind of sick of my life just being about myself. A little bit yeah well it, it immediately gives you like uh a better sense of like time yeah do you know so you go like you know you fucking blink and all of a sudden our kids like three almost and you go fuck that's three years you right. know and then before you know it, it's five and ten and yep. then you're like what like where would i like to be when he's ten or you're sort of like where would i like to be whenever you know you know i've seen like uh like my in-laws and stuff they have all grown up girls now and they fucking go to the pub and they fuck it you know what i mean it's great and you're yeah. like what stage would i like my life to be at when they're they've went to university and finished and they're doing their thing you know yes do you want to be also still fucking heading out to work or whatever or do you want to be like is that what you asked the stand-up question would do you want to do it forever uh no 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 nah, i don't think so really yeah when would you hang it up is it that point? Is that what you were getting onto there that you want to have evenings free where you can fucking? Well, I don't know whether, um, I don't know when it would be, or w- I don't know. But it's, it's the sort, of, it's this unless unless you're like fucking rock star level, I think anything less than that, I'd be like, nah, I'd, I'd hop it. I'd love to sort out some other things, you know, some traditional investments, and then just be like, I can just f- sort of pull back from this now, right? Do you know? Yeah. But it won't it won't be like a giving up it'll be like a retirement yeah you know yeah yeah. just be like that's me done fucking getting another easy jet flight to some shit hole you know i don't want to drive on a friday night when i should be having a good time yeah to give someone else a good time in the piss and rain in november there's a there's a i know there'll be a time when i've had enough of that shit like yeah i can i can i can see myself do you know what you made a good point there if it doesn't ascend the way I would also like it there there are some moments I have where I'm like if I am doing this same thing in 10 years mm. I think I would I'm off to the shed with my father with that one you know what I mean there's a bar leech a bar leech yeah, uh, yeah seriously but, a, but but at the same time if you're enjoying yourself there's no there's nothing wrong with that at all yeah and then people, you know, how many stories do you hear where you're like, just, just one more year, just fucking keep yeah. eking away at it, like. Yeah. Uh, well, that's the thing with me is like I, I, I'm too invested in it now, 
I feel like to to stop anytime in anytime soon because it's like oh yeah because if you've done that first like, like seven years now it's like well now I've just gotten to a place where I'm actually uh, good or anyway mm. good so it'd be like be like trained to be a doctor and then being like yeah do you know what I'll leave it um so yeah although like if I got like you know acting or something would you like to act in shit no nothing that's unless it's my own thing I yeah have no interest um yeah i'd like i i wouldn't mind if i got some kind of work like that i'd be kind of buzzing i want to be an actor first actually but i just never did it and i was afraid my friends would call me gay <laughs> yeah so it's absolutely true. And that that's real toxic masculinity. Yeah. Never mind your fucking cat calling and your yeah. all that shit. And my little brother is an actor. Yeah. And he is gay, so my friends were right. Circle <laughs> of life. Lion King. Right? Let's go eat some fucking noodles. Oh, Cheers for fun. coming on. That's a good lengthy podcast. That's the longest we've done in a while. How long is that now? Uh R thirty five nearly. Jesus Christ. Two chatty Cathy's. Yeah. Mike Rice. Follow him on the on the internet. See you later now. Good lad. Up the raw. Jesus, that was a long one, Les.